growing up in northwest Minnesota, uh, where we're at now, um, this is kind of my, my stomping grounds. Always lived out in the country where I, where I grew up and cut my teeth and experience with wildlife and nature. I remember waiting for the school bus and watching sharp tails walk across the gravel road while, while I was waiting for the school bus. I've always been enamored with you know, sharp tail, prairie chickens, rough grouse. We, we have all of them up here, Hungarian partridge and obviously turkeys. But the sharp tail has always really uh, been special to me because uh, growing up I, I got to see so many of them. As a child I didn't really understand what I was acquiring. I took a lot in, but now that I look back on it and, uh, and I feel like hunting helped carve me into the person I, that I am and now I try to instill that in my family. It's early spring and we're out watching sharp tails dance. Looking for locations is always key for, for finding sharp tail. We're in an old CRP field. We've been kind of walking around looking at scat and feathers and and uh, most of it is concentrated in ruts and flat areas. They kind of migrated down toward, toward the blind and we actually had birds like 10, 10 to 12 yards from the blind. So it's really cool. You'd never get this close to sharp tail without, <laughs> without a dog and without hunting them in the fall. And to watch their, their annual mating dance in the spring is really something to behold if you've never experienced it. The, all the all the noises, the coos, and, and their air sacs filling and deflating, and their two primary tail feathers ticking back and forth gives you that loud ticking sound, and the stomping and the fighting. It's all, it's all very cool. Anytime you can interact with nature in that way, where you get the vocalizations and and stuff like that, is is super cool. And to be this close to it is truly amazing. The sharp tail was once the most abundant game bird in Minnesota. Higher numbers than rough grouse, um, higher numbers than pheasants, obviously. Um, and, and the number had gotten so low that that there was a great concern. So uh, the sharp tail grouse society now, we, we try to push for things like habitat improvement. Um, we try to do land acquisitions, try to purchase as much property as, as possible to, to keep it as a, a stable habitat, stable prairie and uh, restoring prairie in, in northwest and east central Minnesota is, is really important because uh, if we don't do it, we're gonna lose these birds. CRP fields like this are extremely important, not only for the birds, but uh, us as people who enjoy the birds. We wouldn't get to experience this if, if we didn't have the CRP program and, and people didn't uh, you know, keep the native prairie grasses alive. So. Up here, the numbers now are nice and stable. They've rebounded and then stabilized, so very good huntable population. The prairies are vast, so you need a good pair of boots and uh, some serious energy because you're gonna put on a lot of miles. But your dog's gonna have the time of his life because he gets to run free. They lock up on point, you better be ready. Well, something about walking the prairies is just, it's very special. Being a part of all these conservation groups, whether you pay your dues to Ducks Unlimited or the National Wild Turkey Federation or Pheasants Forever, or Quail Forever, all of these memberships, you have to remember that a little bit of that or a lot goes back into habitat. And habitat is the most important thing. It's driven over and over and over. Habitat loss is the number one reason for, for bird decline. So, Join any of these groups. I've been blessed to be a part of a couple of great organizations.